Hey yo, what is up everybody? How are you doing? Welcome to the Nigerian Nomad channel. I hope that you guys are doing well. For you guys that are new to my channel, I vlog predominantly about lifestyle, culture, food, things to do in Nigeria, and also business. I talk a lot about real estate and I talk about agriculture a lot as well. And my whole journey generally is coming to Nigeria is just kind of learning a lot about the culture and how things work. And one of the things that I want to talk about today is integrity. And I know Nigeria is definitely not a country that people think about when it comes to integrity and trust. <laughs> Even Nigerians don't trust other Nigerians. So, but I wanted to mainly talk about the challenges in Nigeria of running an integrity-based business. Um, and more importantly, how to overcome them. Because I've spoken to a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of young people that are starting businesses, and I definitely see the challenges that they face, but I just don't think they're going about it the right way. And on the other side, I think it's also good for people who are investing in Nigeria, relocating to Nigeria, or want to start a business in Nigeria to understand these challenges and how these dynamics work. Even if you're working with someone in Nigeria, you need to understand the challenges that they might face um, also ahead of time. So I think this video is going to be good for everyone all across the board. But before I talk about the challenges, I would say that running an integrity-based business not only in Nigeria, but anywhere in the world is, has its own unique sets of cultural challenges that you have to overcome. So a lot of the times I feel like people are criticizing Nigeria unfairly on the same problems that actually exist worldwide. Um, but Nigeria just have taken on this identity <laughs> and have this reputation of that's just what it is. That's who we are as a nation, which is not good. And it's became like a norm. But I would say this, this, some of these challenges are not just unique to Nigeria. And secondly, I wanted to tell people that are watching this video, especially the ones that are local if you're watching this video, running an integrity-based business is probably the best thing that you can do to help you overcome poverty in Nigeria. I, I don't want to say poverty, poverty <laughs> in Nigeria to help open door uh, up many opportunities and doors for you. Um, because for me personally, knowing having a brand and people knowing me as an integrity based person somebody that they can trust with their money their investment has opened up so many business opportunities that i can ever think of i turn down things all the time so many 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 opportunities so many of them people that want to invest or so many people that want me to get things done for them and the reason why i have all of these opportunities is because they don't see other people that they can trust in nigeria with doing these things properly in the way that they want it done ahead of time and or without bamboozling their money <laughs> and i've heard so many stories of people that have lost money in nigeria so i that's so for the people that are watching just know that there's no other best way and the businesses that i see that are doing well like the people that i've worked with that i've referred a lot of clients to that are making some of them they don't even have time for me anymore because they have so many clients are the people that have a background of dependability, reliability, responsible people, and people of integrity. Those are all the people that are doing well. I even remember um, I had a driver that I posted about how good he is. He is just overwhelmed and too busy to even work with me anymore <laughs> because so many he got so many demands. So and you know I work with uh, another borehole company that I've I've worked with a few people that have just chopped our money, bad customer service, bad practices. But the new borough company that I work for, I talked about how well they are, how professional they are, how good they are that they're doing things. They got a ton of businesses. So definitely, if you're in Nigeria and you want to grow, there's two things that I would advise. Develop a skill, a skill that's needed, that solving a problem is number one. And number two, become a person of integrity and somebody that's dependable and valuable that people can trust. If you can have those two things, you're gonna make a lot of money. It doesn't matter if you're a mechanic, carpenter, plumber, it doesn't even matter what that skill, whether you're a salesperson, a real estate agent, an Airbnb short leg manager, it doesn't matter what industry you are. If you can have those two things and then continuously get better over time, master your craft and figure out how you can do better, you're going to kill it in this, uh, in this country, in this environment, because the competition 
for like people who have integrity is so low. So there's only a very few people there. So you're naturally going to stand out from anyone else. So if you want to stand out from the crowd, practice those two things. Now, I'm not saying that you won't come across people that would want to take advantage of you, but because you would understand your value, um, after, especially after watching this video, and you're going to be patronized by people who understand how you operate, so you're going to attract the right people. You wouldn't even need to worry about all those people. <laughs> all right, so now that I've given you guys that spill and that background, now good things comes with challenges. So run an integrity business, based business, as much as I say it has all these opportunities, all this money that you can make, all this people that you can attract, you have to overcome the challenges of running an integrity-based business. Specifically, I'm going to talk about Nigeria. All right, so let's dive in. I think I wrote down eight points here, and I am going to be referring to my laptop. This just helps me focus and helps me now ramble and divert from the different points that I want to make. Right here, I wrote down eight key points. By the way, guys, if you guys like this topic, make sure that you like the video, and then we'll kind of dive in. So, number one, you have to have a long-term view and a little bit of income diversification when you're starting a business. So the reason why I'm saying this is because every other point that I'm going to bring up in this video is going to come back to number one. And if you don't have that mindset of number one, all the other things that I'm talking about, you're not going to be able to overcome them. So number one, you have to have a long-term view of your business and where you want to go. And in order to have that long-term view, you will have to have a little bit of income diversification in the beginning. So that income could be savings that you save for like maybe six to 12 months to give you time to like gain traction in business, to build, uh, to build like your, your customer base, build trust. Um, because there's gonna be some things that maybe you don't quite did, you did right or you made a mistake, but you want to overcome it with your own capacity and not make the clients pay for it. So all of those things is naturally going to happen. So savings or some people, if you're lucky, maybe you get some people to invest in you. That would be great. Then you don't have to worry about like, you know, you can focus on just kind of doing that or a job income. Believe it or not, I still work my job part time. I don't, I'm not like a hundred percent in the business. And the reason is because I want all the money that we earn in business goes back to our business. It goes back to either paying investors, it goes back to redeveloping our business or growing our business. And the cash flow is very important for me to not stress about taking care of my family's needs, all of these things. So a job is not necessarily a bad thing for entrepreneurs. I know people think a job is like gets a bad rap, but you need income. If I did not have my own job that I still make income on, I think I would have stressed out many, many times. And sometimes that forces people to take shortcuts and do things that they're not wanting to do. Sometimes people are good people. They just end up in a bad situation <laughs> where they have to now do things that's lack of integrity. So always keep that in mind. Some people actually start with good intention and they are good people. They just, because of decisions that they've made, they just catch themselves in a bad situation is what made them now do things that's not necessarily ethical. So yeah, I would say first of all, if you have that view, like this business might take a year. Now, you might get lucky and start making profit right away or you make profit six months or you just start cashing out because you have a great idea. Regardless, just always have this in mind that have long-term view. If you don't have long-term view in doing business in Nigeria, Forget about it. There are other countries that you can go invest in. There are other things that you can do. You can work, no problem. Nigeria to me has probably is one of the countries with the best opportunity right now to gain a high level of income. But you just have to have patience and be willing to overcome the challenges. All right, so that's number one point. Not that we got that out of the way. Number two, you have to realize that you running a business here um, you are in an environment of people that have a reputation of low integrity, unethical standards, bad way of doing business. So how this affects you as a business is if you have a client or customer or investors that want to invest the business, you have to do so much to overcome their trust. You have to prove to them through consistency over time that they can trust you, that you're not like the others. So the w different ways that I've done this, which is not my gem, I've had to be a lot more transparent than I normally would be, um, and I had to be a lot more accessible than I normally would be. 
uh, predominantly to all of the people investing in our business. They all have my phone number, they have my email, they have my WhatsApp, and I'm transparent in like communicating along the way. Whether it's me that made a mistake or, or whether it's not my fault or whether things are not according to the plan, or I have to be a lot more transparent with everybody that I work with. Transparency is actually very uncomfortable. It's not, you know, people want to show that they're in control. <clears throat> that everything is going well. Nobody wants to show that vulnerable side. <laughs> but I've learned over time that if you actually communicate and keep people along the way, they might even give you ideas of how to overcome it. Or, or people just, you just need to communicate with people. So I would say that one is challenging. Just know that a lot of people have previous bad experiences and trauma with people that they have worked with in the past. So for you, if you understand that, like sometimes you'll be, you will understand where people are coming from. Uh, that's why I have to answer. Sometimes I answer a million questions that people have with before they do business. I even feel like they, I'm on a different standard than everybody. They ask me all the detail. How would you do this? How does this work? How does this <laughs> But I understand where they're coming from and I'm patient and I'm like, no problem. I'll give you all the information that you need. So yeah, so just know that you have to overcome trust deficits through transparency, accessibility, and communication. It's just what you have to do um, maybe other places you don't have to do that, but because of the reputation that's around here, if you want to stand out, those are the things that you're just going to have to do. That's why you guys see me on my YouTube channel. I share the lessons that I've learned in farming. I share what I could have done better, what I learned. I share my successes as well. So people have a balanced story uh, and transparency is just important. So yeah, it's not always good. Don't get me wrong. Some people would look at it as like, ah, but most people that are sensible, that are long-term view thinking, they understand the challenges and they're seeing how you're overcoming them. You actually will attract the right people. So don't worry about looking bad. Just know that it's part of the process. So, but the worst place that you can be or the worst situation that you can do is give the people the impression that you have everything under control and then when it's now time to deliver whatever they ask you to do, you're unable to deliver. And now you're now telling them excuses and stories of everything that has happened. That's usually what happens locally and it's very, very bad. I found that people are, you know, understanding to a certain point. You also don't want to take advantage of this. You want to like make sure this doesn't happen and overcome it. But regardless, transparency is always key. Because like, for example, there's been plenty of times where I'm like, man, if this was like 1,000 Naira that you needed to get the stuff done for me and you couldn't do it, I could have just paid you that 1,000 Naira and we could have done this and there would be no problem. So yeah, those types of things. All right, so that's number two, overcoming trust deficits. Number three, you have to now focus on educating your stakeholders and your team on the benefits of running an integrity-based business. Again, when you come into this environment also, as you're building your team, Obviously, when you want to run an integrity-based business, you also now have to surround yourself with people who has integrity as their core value as a human being, as their character, which is also going to be another challenge for you because now even you, if you're a person of integrity, you can't be everywhere at every time. You now have to purposely look for people that have that as like a core value, which is also challenging in this environment. So that's another challenge that you have to come. But a lot of times it's all about education. So you have to educate your team, your stakeholders on the benefits. And with my team, they've seen the benefits firsthand of doing this. Um, they've seen why it's good to always do this because it gets us more money. It helps with consumer retention. It helps with businesses. It helps definitely with referrals. When we take care of this person, even if we didn't make a lot of money or we lost a little bit of money, we will make money long term because they would refer us to other people that would come to us. I think educating people on that and your team on that, once they get it, it makes things easier because sometimes, especially people coming into this space, some people have a higher level of mindset and exposure and education. You've read all these books, you've went to these conferences, you've developed your mind, but you're expecting somebody in this environment to think like you. It's an, it's an unrealistic expectation because they haven't been exposed of taking the time to work on themselves, to develop their own level of mindset. So you might have to educate and help them with that, which is unfortunately what you have to do. Again, 
some people just want somebody ready to go. But unfortunately, in this environment, you do have to coach some people up to think the way you think and to make decisions based on your behalf on the way that you would make decisions. So education is key, but not only on your team, it's also important to educate your own customers. Like if other people are doing it this way, this is why we are not able to do it this way. We're not able to do it this way because we want to do it the right way. It might cost you a little bit more money. It might take us a little bit longer than other people are doing it, but this is why. So I think once you educate people as well, Maybe they'll patronize you. They'll actually be like, ah, okay, that makes sense. Because, and if they don't, trust me, this has happened many times. They will go to that other person and they'll, because you have, because you have insight and they'll have just the worst experience. They'll lose a lot of money. The person will not get it done. They will remember you and come back to you that, ah, dang it, I should have just went with this guy who said he can do it and do things the right way. So again, this goes with long term. If people don't want to work with you, it's fine. Let them go. Let them go experience what they want to experience. If they don't come back this year, they might come back next year. They might come back three months later. But you stick to your standard. Again, everything that I'm talking about, it's not that easy. That's why you have to have a long-term view. That's why I keep going back to number one. So yeah, it, you have to help people change their mindsets around the way that they think. And, uh, you know, sometimes I've had to refund clients on a few things that I didn't feel like I had to refund them on. But for relationship, for, for good riddance, <laughs> I, I have to educate my team that we need to do this, begin, because long term, it's better for the company. So yeah, um, those are kind of like, that's number three. So that's, you have to educate your stakeholders and your team on the benefits of running a high integrity based business. And you have to take the time to educate and help people develop their mindsets and belief system to match where you're at. All right. Number four is slow bureaucracy. So Nigeria specifically, like other third world countries, to be honest, not only Nigeria, other African countries, other countries, the bureaucracy to get things done can be slow and cumbersome and not fully transparent. So this can test the patience of somebody that's committed to running a high integrity based business model um, because you want to deliver results. You want to make sure that you do these things. but you're not in full control. You have to deal with other governmental agencies and other industries to help you do things, especially for us in real estate. You know, like we bought a house for a client to get, uh, to not get light, like Mita for the house. If you guys are in Nigeria, you've had it, had to deal with Mita. To get a Mita is like a problem. Some people wait six months to get a meter. Um, and again, those are some of the things you have to do. To verify the legitimacy of a land in Nigeria, it's so complicated. It's like a rough process. It can take you two weeks um, or you can be shorter depending on who you know. So like, you know, do a survey, check who, who, what's the title on this land. It's not an easy process. <laughs> but again, you have to do it. There has been many things that we've lost because we were taking the time to verify the land and it's fine. It's okay. Um, so yeah, slow bureaucracy can slow things down. Getting approvals for your projects. Um, getting all of these things done just takes time. And this is something that you have to educate people on. Uh, you have to keep that in mind in your business as you're going through this. And some of these things I didn't learn in the beginning though. I'm just also learning over time. Um, so yeah, slow bureaucracy is good. Um, it's something that you need to, no, it's not good. <laughs> it's something that you need to pay attention to while trying to run an integrity based business. It has to be part of like the things that you account for. Uh, when you're working with clients now and again there's ideal there's faster ways to get things done but you just have to make sure that as you're taking the faster way that you're still doing it the right way so fast there is faster right and faster wrong but always try to ideally do the faster right <laughs> all right um number five you are going to have missed opportunities and i've brought this up in all the different things you're gonna have missed opportunities sometimes. You're gonna have competitive disadvantage sometimes in the short run. I think in the long run, you're gonna have way more opportunities, way more competitive advantage that you can handle. But in the short term, don't get discouraged if you have missed opportunities. Because engaging in like high integrity and ethical ways of doing business in an environment where a lot of people don't, um, their product might be a little bit cheaper. They might get a little bit more clients and things like that. And you're going to feel discouraged and tempted to want to do it their way. Most people 
go that route because they're like in tight need of money now. So they are desperate. So they end up falling to doing it that way. But if you go back to number one, I keep going back to number one, you won't have this problem. You keep your standard and you'll be known as the person to go if you want to get things done right. So yeah, um, like an example of this is when we got into this farming model, a lot of different farming models were offering like 70% ROI, 100% ROI. So many people were doing this kind of farm investment models. Missed opportunities for me, there are people that literally pulled out of our investments um, because they like, they want to go with the company that's offering them a higher model. Um, some people, when I get on a call, explain what we're trying to do. Um, they said, and uh, our ROI is too small. And we initially was tempted to issue a high ROI, but I had to back out. So like now, what we know we can successfully deliver is 25% ROI annually in our farming. To me, it seems attainable, it's consistent, and it's a, it has allowed for us to make mistakes and not, and not have to like disappoint. We're still working on this, sometimes there's delay, but again, this was something that we can do. But at the time, it was not like in the most attractive thing for people to do. But guess what? A lot of those farming company, investment company, poultry companies, they have went bankrupt. A lot of them have went bankrupt. So that opens up opportunities for me now. And it gives me a competitive advantage because now I'm still in the market. I'm still going. Everything is still going good. The only challenges we have to deal with now is to make sure that we are producing to the capacity that we need to. A lot of our stuff is internal. So all of that stuff can easily be overcome, easily for us. And we're overcoming it over the last two years. But our first year was rough. So in, anyways, that is like an example of like people pulling out. Like another example is we wanted to buy a house for a client. Ah, this one still pains me, as Nigeria would say. <laughs> we went to, we bought this house for a client. It was like a 170 million naira house at the time. And during this, we kind of went through detail of the house, everything that we needed to do, and we gave like 100 million Naira deposits, uh, I think like that. And literally, what we were doing is we, there was a lot of things that they needed to fix, there was a lot of things that they needed to check, and we were in the middle of like, we didn't want to like just jump and like, just because we found this thing that our clients likes and we want this big commission, we did not want to like jump on it right away and make a move without thoroughly doing our own search and investigation. Guess what? Somebody came to pay full price for that house. And, and this is a house that the client is already emotionally attached to that's beautiful. And the person refunded our money back. Ah, that was so painful. But example, those are example of like missed opportunities that you would go through. But the client understood what we were trying to do. No problem. We ended up finding him another house and we're revamping it, remodeling for him. Life was all good. But just know that you are going to be tempted. You're going to have missed opportunities for people that don't quite understand because of what other people are able to accomplish for them. So yeah, keep that in mind. Missed opportunities, competitive disadvantage is a challenge that you're going to face short term. Now, number six is cultural sensitivity. Ah, this one is a, this one is a good one for people that are coming outside and coming in. So... Understanding and respecting the local culture is very, very crucial um, when you want to implement an integrity-based business practices. So implementing these practices without the sensitivity to like local cultural norms would face sometimes a little bit of resistance and a little bit of misunderstanding. So there's going to be situations where you are stuck in between like the conflict between like doing things the way you need to do it versus the way that the people locally have been doing it. So that one, this could lead to like conflicts um, with like competitors, partners, and also the local people. So you have to now learn how to traverse that into like a win-win situation, um, into like a way that it doesn't quite affect the way they do it, but you're still doing it your way. And that's just some of the things that you're gonna have to like overcome in this type of environment. Um, especially with land, when I came into this, I didn't quite understand the local impact on real estates. You know, a lot of us think of like, okay, CFO, government title, yada, yada, yada. But the biggest challenge is not the government. You can get your documentation. That one is, your biggest challenge is the local people <laughs> that are gonna try to encroach your land, maybe resell your land. So in real estate, we've had to maneuver that. No, we actually need to start with the local first and then the government, not the government and then local. 
those type of examples has helped. We usually deal with the local ballet, whether whatever you guys call them, or whether it's Agbe Rom or Nile, you sort all of these things out on a local level, especially in real estate, before you now sort it out with the government. So you're essentially in Nigeria, you buy land twice. You buy land from the local people, and then you buy land from the government. But this is the things that you guys have to maneuver uh, if you're in Nigeria here, running, trying to run a high integrity based business. You have to know, in order to not have problems later, you do have to like cooperate with the local people in that environment to have good long-term peace. You have to develop relationship, positive relationship. You can't just come there as like a guy and override everyone. It doesn't work that easily. Um, it would not be sustainable for you. Then you have to now go to court. You have to get police involved, soldiers involved. You wouldn't have had to do all of that if you did all of your cooperation, your research, your land acquisition, your physical possession at the local level first. So yeah, that's another tip for you guys. All right. Number, so that summarizes it is cultural, local cultural sensitivity. You have to pay attention to that. Number seven is supply chain challenges. So this is a bit more complex. So like, for example, you as a business, as an individual, as a business, and whether it's farming or real estate too, um, you as the CEO or as the person running the company or your team, you can be a person of integrity. But the contractors that you're working with, the vendors and the different things, they might not be a person of integrity. This would reflect on your business if you deliver the project in a negative way. They, they would definitely put it on your company. So like for example, if you're a real estate business, you're doing real estate, you hire a plumbing person, uh, you hire a bricklayer or a carpenter and all of these things. Um, all of those people, you have to make sure that they're practicing high integrity and ethical based values as they're kind of running your business. So those things matter um, in terms of integrity. So you have to definitely now look at the supply chain. So what most people do in Nigeria is they just take full control of the whole supply chain system. So like for example, um, I talked to somebody who exports uh, Gary um, internationally. And over time he saw that the people that they were buying that they were buying things from, they were mixing the quantity of Gary with other things, yada, yada, yada. And later he just figured out that the best way to overcome this challenge is for him to start his own Gary processing plant. That way he doesn't have to deal with people manipulating the product. So that's just some things where you have to do. You have to fully scrutinize the supply chain, make sure that you're involved throughout, have checks and balances, or you take over the full supply chain of your business. So that's one way to do that as well. Now the final one of things that you, so that one is supply chain. So the final one that you hope to have to overcome to run a high integrity based business, you cannot run a business in Nigeria without thinking of inflation. So I have seen a lot of people go out of business or they couldn't deliver to clients simply because of inflation. And this happens sometimes in real estate. Like, you know, some people buy a, property off plan or buy something off plan. They pay for all the materials that you need to buy. Um, if you don't buy those materials ahead of time while the price is stable um, and you wait longer. Like for example, when I got to Nigeria, I think cement was like, I don't even know, like cement was like 3,000 Naira a bag at that time. And when it was even going to 4,000, we were all yelling like, oh my God, cement is like 4,000. What's going on? Nigeria is crashing. Oh. <laughs> but guess what? Cement is like literally almost seven, 8,000 Naira now. So that means your cost has doubled. So some people literally are not able to deliver on their projects because they sold it lower and they don't have the buffer or the capacity to like not deliver. So if you're going to do a project, you need to take money Think about, put inflation into consideration as you're doing business. And a lot of times you have to buy materials in bulk ahead of time while the price is stable. So you just, and if you're not going to do that, you just have to think that the price is going to go up and you have to have that in mind, whether you're quoting a project or whether you're doing a long-term project or speed up the time that it takes to do your project. Whatever way, this has to be communicated to your clients and you have to keep that in mind. Anyways, guys, if you can continuously like watch, bookmark this video, take some notes. If you can like definitely think of this 
eight things and how to overcome that in your business, you will stand out and overcome all the challenges of running a high integrity based business and you will be able to deliver value to your investors, deliver value to your customers, deliver value to your clients. And you're going to have all the opportunities that you can want to run a successful, high profit margin, cash flow business that you've always wanted. So again, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. By the way, guys, we're looking for investors still uh, in our Green Paradise project that we're building a community or our farming project or our short lived business. If you're interested in investing, uh, reach out to us. We're providing a 25% ROI on investment, but we're also looking for business partners and co-founders. If you're interested as well, reach out. We'll love to chat more. That one requires a little bit more capital, uh, but we want um, we are ready to like expand and bring in like uh, business partners. If you're interested, uh, definitely reach out. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you like more content like this. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Um, tip underneath this video if you like to tip if you really really enjoyed this video and lastly guys remember all the information on how to work with me how to consult with me if you want to consult with me visit consultwithbio.com i'm open to doing consultation with you for you guys that are interested in that but if you want to work with us invest in our projects all the information will be in the description on how to work with us and lastly guys remember it's your time to rise and let your light shine peace